Hello, everyone. I'm Talaya Dendi. If you're new to the show, I am the host of Navigating Cancer Together. It's the show that has something for everyone facing cancer. Why? Because everyone is different with different needs, beliefs, and perspectives. Thank you for joining us for this episode. I encourage you to open your minds and your hearts. Today, our very, very special guest is my brother, Jarrell Berry. Jarrell and I are 10 years apart, and he's 10 years younger. He is one of my very best friends, and he's actually given me a gift today. This recording will be released August 7th, but my birthday is several days after that. So having him as a guest on this show is a very big gift to me. I'm so excited for you all to hear my brother's perspective about how a cancer diagnosis impacts siblings. Jarrell is a health insurance agent and he loves fitness and traveling. I am so grateful, Jarrell, that you have joined me here today to really give your perspective about how my cancer diagnosis impacted you. Jarrell, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here and thanks for having me. And yes, I'm an insurance agent. I love fitness. I try to work out at least four to five times a week. I love to travel whenever I get a chance because Minnesota is, gets boring here. So it's always good to get away when I can. Yes, yes. I know exactly what you mean. I have the traveling bug too. And it is a place where, you know, you really have to get away and just explore different things. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Jarrell, I am so honored to have you here with me today. We we have been through so much together in life. We've grown together. I am just so proud of the man that you've become. And it's so interesting because when we were younger, the 10-year difference seemed like a big difference. But now that we've gotten older, it doesn't seem like much of a difference at all. And again, I'm just so proud of the man that you've become. The other thing I just want to say is that I'm so happy that our mom really taught us to honor each other, to respect each other, and to work out our differences with respect. So that's, I really think, what helps us to have a really close relationship. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, thank you. I, I appreciate that. And yeah, I agree 100%. Yep, she always taught us to stick together no matter what. And yeah, that's, we've, we've been doing it all our lives. So I appreciate that. I agree hundred percent. The other thing is that we actually know each other and we show up for each other and we respect each other. And I think sometimes in family dynamics that gets lost the respect piece because people are it just does. like, well, that's my family and they'll just deal with whatever. Yep, I, I agree with that 100% because some family, they think just because they're family, they can get away with certain things and that's not cool at all. So, Yeah, well, you keep doing everything that you're doing. I know that more great things are to come for you. I would really like to get going on why we're really here. We could go on and on forever and people would be like, well, we didn't come here to hear your other conversation. <laughs> so, <laughs> so and before we... I'm uh -huh. sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No uh, problem. Say, before we begin, I'm proud of what you're doing with your business and sharing your information and your story with, with the world and community. So keep doing what you're doing as well, too. Thank you so much. You know, that means a lot. And another thing I want to mention is you're somewhat of a private person like myself. And yeah. <laughs> it really means a lot. It's just really a testament to your level of support in showing up here with me today, because I know it's not easy when you are a private person, but thank you for believing in my mission and the work that I'm doing. You're welcome. No problem. As I mentioned, we're going to talk about how a cancer diagnosis impacts one sibling. I thought it was really interesting. I came across a study by Burke and Doom, and the study's called, You Nearly Feel Like You Have a Bit Less Right to Grieve. And it's a qualitative study on the impact of cancer on adult siblings. And that study can be found in the Journal of Cancer Survivorship. And I will share a link to this study in the listen notes for this episode. 
what this study examined was the impact of cancer diagnosis and treatment on adult siblings. The study aimed to explore the positive and negative impacts of cancer on adult siblings, including bereavement. And the second aim of this study was to understand how they are supported, how the siblings are supported. The study identified five main themes relating to the impact of cancer on adult siblings. And those themes are changes in family relationships, siblings' grief being forgotten, benefits of social support networks, supporting their siblings, and caregiving and self-support. The findings of the study highlighted the substantial impact that cancer can have on adult siblings, yet siblings may often feel overlooked or forgotten in favor of other family members. There are positive and negative impacts of a sibling's cancer. Positive impacts include the way in which sibling and family relationships can change for the better following a cancer diagnosis, and the negative impacts for siblings of cancer patients include the burden associated with caring for their sick sibling. There is a clear need for organizations and support services to improve the tailoring of services for siblings. So this study really is what prompted me to have a de- detailed conversation with my brother, Jarrell, about his experience watching all of this unfold. And we've talked about it in the past, but in the past, when we had this conversation, I was not aware of this study, of course. This study came out in 2023, so just last year. And I thought it would really be interesting to go back and revisit that conversation and maybe ask some more targeted questions. So Rel, you ready for the conversation? Yeah, I'm ready. Wonderful. So Rel, please describe your initial reaction when I shared that I had cancer. When I called you that evening on a Friday, what was your initial reaction when I shared the news with you? Uh, I was actually shocked because you were young at this, well, you're still young now, but you were (laughs) young i'm just like well, and i was like confused like how you how you receive the diagnosis of cancer because you don't drink you don't smoke you eat pretty healthy too so i was just shocked and scared when i didn't know the full details of the type of cancer that you had at the moment and kind of stressed out too because i didn't want anything to happen to you so i was it was scary at the time i'm not gonna lie so. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm sorry that you had to go through that. It was a really tough time for all of us. And I can imagine, you know, just hearing that and just like, well, okay. It sounds like you had really some of the same questions I had and same feelings. Yeah. Like, you know, I was thinking the same thing. Well, I don't drink, I don't smoke. How did I get cancer? And yeah, it was it was pretty scary hearing those words. So thank you so much for sharing that. You're welcome. And yeah, you don't eat processed foods or anything like that. You've always ate pretty healthy far as I know. I'm just, I didn't understand it. I'm like, how did that happen to you of all people? (laughs) Mm -hmm. It really made me realize that again, cancer doesn't care. It doesn't care how you eat a lot of the times and, and all those different things. Like there's so, so, so many different factors. And I still never got a straight answer about how I got cancer. And I think that's the really trivial piece for a lot of people is like, we want to know so we can do as much as we can to prevent it in the future. But a lot of times, in many cases, there's no definitive answer. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any words for that. It's just, I don't want to say too much, but yeah, that's just, I, they don't have the answer for that. I think me personally, Mm but Yeah, for as long as, you know, it's been around. I'm just I'm just hoping that we get to a point where there is a cure for cancer and it's accessible to everyone. Me too. Rel, my next question for you is how did you process the news in the days and weeks following my diagnosis? How did you work through all of those feelings that you were having? Well, if I talk to some close friends and about it and they were supportive of it too everything's gonna be all right once you found out what type of cancer was i educated myself on it too 
And then some told me, I think, I think it was pretty strong. It was the guy that told me that everything is going to be all right because we have strong faith. We've been taught to have strong faith from my mom. So I believe that you were going to be okay after I educated myself on it too. You're right. Faith really does play a big part. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say that I go to church every Sunday or anything like that, but I definitely believe in God. And that really played a big part in that experience and in my, in my life. So thank you for leaning into your faith as well, because that helps everyone. Well, most definitely it does. Prayed a lot about it too. Yeah, it was, it was hectic around that time personally. Mm -hmm. in the beginning but as as time progressed and you were starting to get better I uh, that's when I started feeling better too what were some of your biggest fears and uncertainties how did the uncertainties of how things were going to go and how things were going to look how did that impact you like I said, it was scary in the beginning, but yeah, what I thought was like, what if they weren't able to cure it? And then what if you passed away from it? That was like my main two concerns right there. Yeah. You know, that thought entered my mind when I got the initial diagnosis, but I quickly shifted from worrying about dying to how am I going to live? What do I have to do to overcome this thing? You know, what do I need to do? How am I going to muster up the energy to go through six months of chemotherapy and a month of radiation? Like you, initially, my thought was death because that's what we always hear. But automatically, yeah. And I said, no, I got to shift my thinking and really focus on how am I going to live? I'm, I need to figure out what I need to do to overcome this thing. And you fought through it. So congratulations once again. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it's a team sport. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you, mom, and the other support that I had as well. So always eternally grateful for that. Um, how did the diagnosis change your role within our family? Do you feel like it changed your role in our family? Not necessarily changed my role, but I know I had to like step up to be there for support, you know, be there with you, talk with you and go with you to your appointments. And then sometimes sit with you with, through chemo too. So I was like, I, I got to be even more supportive than normal. So I don't feel like my role changes just increase if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You being there and providing that support made the world a difference. A lot of times mm -hmm. caregivers and loved ones, they feel helpless. They don't, they feel like they don't know what to do, but I always tell people just show up, keep showing up. Even if you don't know what to say, you're not sure of what to do. Because that person who is going through treatment, who is going through cancer, they appreciate you being there. That takes right. away the feeling of being, of, of feeling alone. And so right. I appreciate you because you were working, you know, you had your own responsibilities, your own life at the time, and you made time to show up for me, as you said, even more. And again, I appreciate that. You're welcome. That's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. How do you feel our relationship has changed since my diagnosis in 2011? Well, we were always close. So I think it made us grow closer together relationship-wise. We never were apart relationship-wise, but I think it made our relationship even stronger than before. I really agree with that because as I mentioned early in this episode, we have been through a lot together. And then that was something else, something yeah. that we've never experienced together before. <laughs> and so I kind of felt like we were figuring this thing out together. Yeah. Just navigating it through together. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> From different perspectives, but together. <laughs> and um, it just really made for a very interesting life experience, really. I had never experienced anything like that. Of course, we've had family members that have passed on and, and things like that, but to just be right there and 
you be the one that's sick or you be the one who is seeing your loved one go through something like cancer or another illness, it's really different. It is Mm -hmm. very different. Yeah, very different. I was in my 30s at the time. So that means you were in your 20s and we were both really young. And so, (laughs) and so, and so, you know, kind of going through something like that at those ages too, for me personally, it really matured me, I think, much faster because I felt like there was more of an urgency to live life. How do you feel about that? You know, being in your early 20s, seeing someone go through that, you being right in the thick of it, how do you think that impacted you at that age? Well, definitely it impacted me. It made me more aware of like health, being more healthy too, like trying not to be stressed out about things because I know stress can cause cancer too. And also, basically, I changed my diet, too. I was working out at the time, too, but then I changed my diet even more around those times. So, yeah, that impacted me a lot. It opened my eyes like it could happen to anybody. So It was interesting, to say the least. Now I want to shift more to, like, family dynamic. I experienced some things. You experienced some things. Certain people, you know, didn't show up for their reasons not sure why it doesn't even matter at this point um but how do you feel it changed our family dynamic well it basically shows us who's real and who is not who's not real pretty much that's what it showed me it opened my eyes i'm like wow i thought this person would would actually be there and that person wasn't there so i'm like that yeah that bothered me Right there, I'm like, we were all supposed to be close, but that person didn't show up at all like they were supposed to. So I look at that relative completely different behind that, too. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that was one of the eye opening and also hard parts of yeah. that experience. And I really had to shift my focus from that, too, and focus on getting better. But it was a hurtful experience to not have certain people show up and people that you've shown up for before as well in many times and not having that support reciprocated. It definitely, it definitely impacted me in a not so good way. But at the same time, I realized that I couldn't focus on that, that I had to focus on, you know, continuing to live and overcoming cancer. Right. And you had to stay focused and stay positive. I believe if you would have focused on negative things, you wouldn't have came out of it the way you did. So it's good that you focused on yourself, mm-hmm. and not the negativity. Yeah. You know, from those people that were supposed to be there. So I applaud you for that. So. Thank you. And I'm not going to sit here and act like it was easy because it wasn't. Yeah. Of course, there was a lot of gossip and you know, oh, did she lose her hair and just all kinds of just insane things to me that why would a person even say some of the things, but that goes back to the importance of having the right kind of people around you. And I feel like with like you and mom and a few other people, I had the right kind of people around me that were able to just kind of insulate me from a lot of those those things and just help me to realize that getting better was the most important thing yeah most definitely you definitely do have to have a good core of supportive people in, in those type of situations is anybody that's like negative I don't I think it would just impact the, the process of, of healing so yeah, it's good that you didn't have those negative people around. I, me personally, I think. So mm-hmm. it worked out for the best. Yes, I agree. I agree. What were some of the biggest challenges that you faced? I know you you spoke on your emotions and things like that. Were there any challenges that you had faced as a result of my diagnosis? Yeah, just, just trying to stay positive, you know, 
try not to be negative, have negative thoughts, and just trying to stay strong. Some days were harder than the others, but that's some things that impact me. Sometimes I was thinking about it at work, so it kind of impacted that too, and just a regular life. And I was like, everything is going to be okay. Just kept praying and built up strength to stay positive and supportive and did the best that I could do to help out. Mm -hmm. And you did that. You absolutely did that. And again, just so grateful to have a brother like you. A lot of people don't have a brother or siblings that they're close with and that they can lean on and just grateful. Most definitely. Well, from your perspective, were there any silver linings that you discovered or that you experienced? Yes, there was. So after like learning about the type of cancer that you had, the Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer, I did some research on it and I found out that the form of cancer that you had is less aggressive and it's more curable than the other cancers. So that made me happy too and the, and the positive that you were going to basically beat this thing too. So that, that made me really happy right there. I was like, wow, that feel a whole lot better now. That was one of the things that made me more hopeful as well, was that when I did the research and I talked with my oncologist about the success rate of the treatment that he was recommending, hearing the survival rates, the five-year and more survival rates was really encouraging. And that was something that when I learned about that early on, that was another thing that I used to just fuel me to to help keep me going like that I can overcome this I can overcome this any other silver linings for you in your personal life or anything yeah that was the main thing right there because like I said it was more it was scary it was scary for me too I didn't want nothing to happen to you so I felt mm -hmm. real good about finding that information out too so mm -hmm. that made me feel a lot better you mentioned faith earlier. Were there any other ways that helped you to stay hopeful during that difficult time? I mentioned this before, but prayer, that's one of the main ones right there. I think faith or spirituality or whatever it is that people believe in and practice, I think is so critical all the time, but especially during times when someone you love is facing cancer or any other illness or disease, prayer and faith are key. Yes, it is, most definitely. What advice would you give to other siblings going through a similar experience? I would say just be there for your brother or sister the best way that you can. There's no written manual of how to do it. You just have to just be there just for support, you know, talk. Uh, try to be strong the best way you can, uh, stay prayed up, have a positive attitude and just, you know, just be there, you know, go to the appointments, go to the chemo sessions, keep your, your siblings company during that time too, even at their homes too, because that helps your sibling out too. So yeah, just be there the best way you can. Great advice. Thank you for sharing that. You did a really great job being there to the best of your ability. You showed up, you checked on me on the days where you had to work and you couldn't physically be there. You checked on me every day, just made sure that I had the things I needed. And then also you kind of warded off negativity from other people, which I greatly appreciate as well. So I definitely have to say that you really stepped up and showed up for me in more ways than one and in ways that I will be eternally grateful. I would always show up for you as well. Happy to do that. Oh, yeah. I just hope not in the same way, not for the same right. reason, I should say. <laughs> right. Yeah. I know that without a doubt. So. Yes. Yeah. Rel, are there any organizations or resources that would have been helpful to you at that time? I think what would have helped was like an organization for support groups for families who are helping their family members cope and deal with cancer, you know, just someone to talk to 
and lean on for support outside of family, just someone else to talk to about those type of things. I think that would have helped a lot. I agree. At the cancer center I went to, I was not aware of any support groups or any resources for siblings or other family members. Of course, when you or mom came with me to appointments, you were greeted and things like that, but there wasn't anything specifically for you to support you, to help take care of you. And that was something that I noticed later on and that I thought about later on. Today in 2024, there are like more caregiver resources and things like that, but I still have not seen anything specifically for adult siblings. They do have some resources for adolescent siblings, but not for adult siblings. And I think it's really interesting because in some cases, there may be siblings who are single and maybe the only person they live around is their brother or sister and they may not have anyone else. And so that sibling is their primary caretaker. But when people think of caregivers, they typically think of adult children caring for their families or a spouse caring for another spouse. There isn't much discussion about siblings as caregivers or siblings as support systems. And I think that really needs to change. Yeah, I agree because we go through it too. So that should be something that it should be incorporated as well too for mm -hmm. support for siblings who's supporting their sibling who has cancer. So yeah, I think that should be an option as well too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Braille, as we wind down, is there anything else that you would like to share today that you haven't had the opportunity to share about you, about your experience at that time? Anything? Yeah, I learned a lot through that. Through, it was Even though it was your experience, it was my experience too. I, I actually learned a lot more about cancer, what to watch out for, and try not to stress about things. And just trying to be more healthy and active. I was active then, but that made me go even more harder too. So it was just being more aware and mindful about my health too. And just, you know, just watching out for things like that pretty much. So I learned a lot around that time about cancer. I, I knew some things about it, but there were some things I didn't know about it either. So it opened my eyes up to it even more. I think those are some really good things that came out of it is more awareness, more education, yeah. taking better care of yourself. That's a yeah. huge outcome, a good outcome from that experience. So thank you so much for sharing that. And hopefully nothing like this ever shows up again in our lives. I hope, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but in the event that Maybe someone else you know gets a cancer diagnosis or any diagnosis of a major illness. How has going through that experience with me, how has that prepared you should you have to step up and support someone else in that situation in the future? Do you feel like you would have a better handle on it? Yeah, if I feel like I would have a better better handle on it, I know like what to do now, more things I can do, and basically just try to be there for them for support as well, the same way I was there for you. And yeah, and just, you know, just pretty much just be there, pretty much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, again, you did a wonderful job being there for me. I will never forget it. And that's another chapter in our book. You know, as I mentioned several times, we've been through a lot together, grown together, matured together, so many different things. And that's what siblings should do for each other. That's what families should do for each other. And I'm right. grateful that I have you as a sibling. I'm grateful I have you as a sibling as well. Thank you. This conversation really just supported the findings of the study that I mentioned earlier. And it really is important to make sure that siblings have the support that they need. They have the services and resources that they need. 
especially if they are the ones supporting and caring for their loved one, their brother, their sister. There just needs to be more of a focus on the family as a whole. When someone is diagnosed with cancer, I'm going to share the link to the study in the listen notes. And I encourage you to really check out that study because there's a lot to be learned from it. Again, it creates more awareness around how a cancer diagnosis impacts everyone in the family, everyone in that person's life. Before we end, I want to pose a question to the audience, a couple questions. The first question is, how has this episode made you feel about challenges faced by siblings of cancer patients? The other question is, if you have experienced a similar situation, well, really, it's a, not a question, it's a statement, but if you've experienced a similar situation, I would really love to hear about your story. You can reach me on LinkedIn. Just look for Talea Dendi and let me know, send me a message and let me know how this episode impacted you. And if you've had a similar experience, how that experience impacted you. Also, how has this episode made you feel about challenges faced by siblings of cancer patients? What have you learned from this episode? Jarrell, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to talk with me, to share your experience with the valuable listeners out there. And I'm so happy that they got a chance to meet you and hear from you. And thank you for your support over the years. Welcome and uh, thank you for having me and opening up your platform to me as well. I appreciate you letting me share my experience too. I respect. Thank you. My pleasure. I would like to give a shout out to the listeners. Thank you so much for joining us. Please share, follow, or subscribe so that you can easily find this podcast and listen again. You can listen to Navigating Cancer Together on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcast. Again, if you'd like to have some conversations around this topic, send me a message on LinkedIn. You can search for Talaya Dendi. That is T-A-L-A-Y-A-D-E-N-D-Y. Also, if you or someone you love have received a cancer diagnosis, head on over to ontheotherside.life backslash guided meditation and get your free guided meditation today that will really help you work through those very stressful and challenging times and get recentered. That is it for this Wednesday. Until next time, let's keep navigating cancer together. Take care. Thanks for listening to this episode of Navigating Cancer Together. I hope you found it helpful. Please be sure to subscribe, share, and tell your friends and family about it. For notes from the show and previous episodes, visit ontheotherside.life and check out the podcast section. I would love it if you join me for the next episode. Talk to you soon.